Hey everyone, welcome to Dozen of Tech. I'm Daniel and I'm here in London for a first look at the new LG G3. LG's new flagship smartphone for 2014. So, let's have a look. Okay, so with me I have Sean from LG, I'm a UK product manager. Well, thank you, Sean, for joining us. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Okay, so this is the LG G2. The LG G2 was an amazing smartphone, it had an amazing screen, an amazing camera, and yeah, it was a great phone. It was basically last year's flagship. Yeah. Now, the G Flex was even better. It was basically the first true flexible smartphone, and it also came with a self healing coating, which was pretty cool. Correct. And now you have you have this guy, you have the LG G3, which mm -hmm. is supposed to be even better than the G2. Yeah. So what makes this the LG G3? What makes it so special? What makes it their flagship for 2014? Yeah, so what we've done, we've actually learned from, from the G2. Um, the G2 was a fantastic, critically acclaimed handset, yeah. as you quite rightly described. Um, one thing you notice is the actual display size is fantastic. It's a 5.5 inch glorious HD resolution display. Um, we've improved the camera as well. Um, so yes, it is the same 30 megapixel camera sensor, but we've improved the image stabilization by up by over 20%. Um, supporting that, you have the world's first handset with a laser autofocus. Um, and we've added um, a dual LED flash as well. Um, as I said, we've learned from the G2. So what that means is where the G2 actually had uh, an encased battery and no expandable memory, you can now do that on the G3. Um, it has a, a massive 3000 milliampere battery just to support the display and just your general tasks. Uh, and then as well, if you want to save as much storage as you want, you've got the opportunity of actually embedding a 128 gig storage card. That's In awesome. fact, um, just for you, Daniel, um, the handset's capable of up to two terabytes, but obviously two terabytes doesn't exist, so 128 gigs is the, is the top limit. That's awesome. Okay, now starting off with the display. The display is basically a quad HD display, so a 2K display. Yeah. Now, my question, my first question here is, why did you decide to go with such a display? Because at the moment, most of your competitors have a 1080p full HD display. Yeah. And a really famous person, who unfortunately is not with us anymore, said that basically the limit of the human's retina is about 300 ppi. So basically everything above that is unnoticeable to the naked eye. It turns out that there's a magic number right around 300 pixels per inch that when you hold something around 10 or 12 inches away from your eyes is the limit of the human retina to differentiate the pixels. Okay. Which is true, but basically from a normal viewing distance. If you keep that phone really, really close, you can view the pixels. Correct. Now, on the 1080p displays out there, even if I hold those phones really, really up close to my eyes and I have a really good eyesight, hopefully, <laughs> um, I cannot tell the pixels apart from each other. So why did you decide to go with a 2K display? So, um we at LG understand that actually uh, it is possible to determine, uh, a human eye is possible to determine over 300 pixels per inch. Um, this is actually true of the art world. Um, if you take obviously kind of like the lines uh, per inch that they actually use, um, approximately 225 lines per inch is, a, is actually a quad HD resolution display in LG's world. Um, so if that's already existing in the art world, Clearly, obviously, as a human being on a smartphone, we can actually depict, obviously, the difference on the Quad HD resolution display. And that is true because I now have, obviously, the, the, the difference between the G2 and the G3, and there is a clear difference in terms of uh, normal um, color levels. Um, so you get 100% uh, accuracy in colors, you get really nice wide viewing angles, and they are very punchy and very vivid. My second question here is, if you have such a gorgeous display, basically 2K display, it will pretty much drain battery faster, at least it should be. So how did you optimize the battery so that it doesn't take so much? So um, we have we pride ourselves on 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 on, on battery uh, technology. Um, in fact, um, we have 
one of our sister companies, which is uh, LG Chemicals, which have quite rightly de uh, delivered great battery technology on the G2. And we've used them um, along with actually a little bit of software enhancement to actually improve um, the actual battery performance on the G3. So um, yes, the G3 has the same 3000 milliampere battery. Which is now removable. Which is now removable, of course. Um, and then what we've actually been able to do from a display point of view is have adaptive um, display control. So what that means is that the screen doesn't actually refresh half as much as what you actually see in standard LCD displays. What that means is you actually get a static image and it doesn't buffer actually on the RAM or actually on the processor tearing away when at the battery. When this gameplay, basically when you play a gameplay which... You, game would which say that, you would say that, but we've also kind of like um, made changes with the actual CPU clock in time and it refreshes so quite it adequately. Be switch automatically it should be able to switch automatically using, depending on obviously what you're doing. I see. Okay, so at the moment, as far as I know, there are no third-party apps which take full advantage of the display. So how do you see this in the future? Do you think developers will start adapting the 2K resolution? Um, I think a lot of um, developers, uh, media owners, will quite clearly, that's actually kind of like the thing, especially in the TV world. And TV world and the mobile world is actually kind of like closing the gap quite, quite narrow. And um, we see, and especially with the likes of obviously a lot of streaming content coming on board, we see a lot of new content which will actually facilitate up to 2K, 4K resolution displays. Um, but what better content to actually come and be able to create other than your own? So with the handset, you're able to actually create 4K resolution content. Um, and you're able to see it actually better on a 2K Since resolution. You have a display, yeah. Exactly, you don't lose as much fidelity as you would do if you're looking at it on a full HD or actually lower resolution display. So, what do you think the limit in the display quality will be? Do you think manufacturers will start increasing it, or do you think 2K is the limit? Uh, it's a difficult one to say, to be fair. Um, Yes, we at LG obviously have, you know, I like to push the boundaries. We are known for innovation. Um, I think what will happen is actually kind of like the next will be display technology, improving obviously the actual display technology, moving away from LCDs and things like that, rather than focusing on the resolution of the display. Um, because that bearing in mind, obviously you have to take into consideration the screen size, which obviously kind of like mitigates obviously how much resolution you can actually see sure. on the display. So it's a difficult one to, 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 to to, to, to gauge right now. Um, I think 2K is an adequate screen size. As I said earlier, um, it is possible to determine over and above uh, 300 pixels per inch and G3 is testament to that. And to be honest, 2K is quite impressive on, on such a device. It's pretty much a device which basically fits in my hand and it basically has four times the resolution, actually twice the resolution of my full HD 32 inches of TV, so there you yeah, go. it's quite there you go. Yeah, there you go. So we're quite happy with it. We think that, um, and, and, and think about this, I mean, even while you're actually watching content actually on the display, it's actually a lot more comfortable on the eyes to actually watch uh, content, even though it's actually in a lower resolution. It's actually more comfortable to actually watch it in, on, in, on, on the higher res on the display. Think about how you watch TVs or if you look at cinema, it's a lot more comfortable to actually watch content on a big screen on a higher resolution. Okay, so Moving on to the camera, the LG G2, which is basically this guy right here, had a 30 megapixel camera capable of recording in 1080p. Yeah. And it featured optical image stabilization. I even remember that funny chicken ad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which was old Lizzie. Funny. Yeah, we love her. <laughs> yeah. So what about this guy? What about the G3? What's different camera-wise? So um, we've kept the resolution. We didn't want to get into the megapixel race. Um, we felt 30 megapixels was adequate, but what we have done is actually improve the optical image stabilization. So you get a 30, a 20, over 20% improvement um, in terms of the reduction of um, error from shaking and actually in low level conditions, you get a brighter image as well. Um, that's actually supported with the uh, dual LED flash, obviously, if you need to actually take images in even darker surroundings. So um, uh, from a camera point of view, 
Um, it's exactly the same module, exactly the same sensor, just improvements on the optical image stabilization from a software point. I see. And now you also get the up into recording 4K. Correct. Um, so taken from the G-Flex, which was also able to record in 4K, we've introduced that onto the G3. Um, you're able to record in 4K up to 30 frames per second. And you're also able to record 120 frames per second in Slow HD. Mode. Correct. This is basically the first smartphone in the world to feature an autofocus, a laser autofocus camera. Yep. So this should be really effective in low light conditions, right? Correct. So um, what it does actually, um, it improves obviously your, 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 your camera experience. Uh, one of the best things obviously that a user can have is the ability to actually take really snappy images as soon as obviously the, the, the moment appears. And you don't want to have to wait for the camera to actually focus before you can actually take the image, right? So yeah, as a matter of fact, you can... All you have to do is simply press tap the screen once and and, that, and away you photo. exactly away you go. Focus, yeah. So we've simplified the UI. It's very very clean. Um, in fact, all you see and on the main screen is just three dots and a back button. Um, the autofocus, the laser autofocus, is always on. Um, and what that does actually, it kind of like points at your object in a matter of milliseconds, think quicker than you can actually even think. Um, it's actually quicker than the, than a blink of an eye. So this correct. is basically the fastest autofocusing camera on the planet. And that is very true. Wise. Very, very true. So um, to be exact, it's actually 276 milliseconds in terms of its autofocus time. Uh, and that means that whenever you actually point the view, so I point the camera at what you actually, your actual object, just tap and shoot, you're ready to go, and that's it. And just a quick note, a blink of an eye is about 300 something. Like 300 you... milliseconds, yeah. correct, yeah. That's important, especially if you're looking at fast-moving objects or in low-light conditions, obviously it helps to actually improve the, the actual image sensor to widen the uh, sensor a little bit wider. One of the other key features actually, so we've actually improved not just the, the rear camera, but we've also improved the, the front-facing front -facing. camera as well. So yes, it is a 2.1 front-facing megapixel camera capable of shooting in 1080p, but we've increased the image sensor and the pixel size. So it's actually the same resolution what you would get on one of our fruity friends actually <laughs> kind of like 8 megapixel sensor on their rear camera. Um, and Obviously, there's a lot of people actually taking selfies nowadays, and sure. um, we actually just call it a selfie cam, which is exactly what it is now. Um, but to aid um, people taking selfies, we've actually introduced a really cool feature, which is simply just holding your hand actually up to the screen, which is recognized, closing your palm, and wait for a three second countdown, strike your pose, image done. Okay, now design-wise, this is a pretty impressive phone. Now, the back is not metal, obviously. Yep. It's actually a faux metal cover, yep. but it feels quite, to be honest, it feels quite good in the hand. It's, I think the most impressive thing about this phone is the fact that it's 5.5 inches and it pretty much has the size of a 5-inch competitor smartphone, yep. which is pretty cool. Basically, having a 5.5 inch smartphone in, yeah, just a 5 inch smartphone factor. Yeah. So, um, how we've been able to actually achieve that? Um, so, what and you'll you notice is that the display takes up nearly over 76% of the um, front real estate. Um, how we've been able to achieve that is because we've actually introduced a button to the rear. Um, I'll come to obviously the rear key and why we've done that. But one key feature is the re, uh, one key reason why we've done that is so that you can actually get a really really narrow bezel you don't have elements running down either side of the handset which would require obviously a power button or volume key so we're able to use just pure screen on the actual front side of the display talking about the rear key um, the rear key is is a really nice introduced on the g2 of course um, we felt it was a convenient and secure way of actually holding your hand holding the, the phone in your hand Bear this in mind, most people when they actually hold their phone, their index finger is always around the camera, camera area um, and their index finger is pretty much situated just below the camera lens. Um, so we thought to ourselves, well, while people are actually making a phone call, whether you're left or right handed, if you're left or right handed, sometimes it's a bit of a stretch to actually reach for the power button, right? Yes. Or the volume keys. Um, why not actually have it on the back? It makes it more secure to actually hold it in your hand while you're actually kind of like making that phone call. You can increase or decrease the, the volume, volume very, very easily. Uh, and as a result of that, we've actually introduced 
knock on, um, which was on the G2, which is a very simple feature on actually kind of like starting up the screen. And following on from that, we've got knock code, which is actually a very secure feature um, up to well over 86,000 different combinations. Uh, so you can be safe in the knowledge that the handset is actually secure, unless people were actually watching over your shoulder to see what <laughs> not code sequence you've tapped in. May I remind you as well, so with the back cover being able to take, you, you being able to be removed, um, it actually supports wireless charging as well. So that's one thing that uh, many people don't know or it may, may not have come out in the wash so far. So while we don't actually have a, a full metal body, the um, reason why we've done that is because uh, so that we can actually get additional features such as wireless charging, which people have been crying out for. Um, the ability, obviously, to kind of like remove the battery and put an expanded memory uh, battery in there is great. And the ability, obviously, to expand your memory uh, because the handset actually supports lossless file formats as did the G2, but it was a little bit difficult to actually kind of like have those large files, you know, stored on the handset or being able to stream them because you can't actually enjoy the content as and when you choose. And now on the back of the phone, we have something which is basically a speaker and it's supposed to be pretty, pretty powerful. Yes. So any comments on that? Yeah, so um, um, where the speaker on the G2 is actually at the bottom of the handset, we've repositioned that to actually the back of the handset to allow more resonance. Um, and we've improved the actual kind of like speaker quality. So the speaker now has a one watt speaker versus a 0.7 watt speaker on the G2 with a boost amp actually. So whenever obviously kind of like, let's say if you're, you're, um, you're recording content, Content, um, it will actually always optimize, obviously, kind of like sound levels on the on the handset, so you can actually enjoy your content uh, uh, quite nicely. And to be honest, as I mentioned before, although it's not metal, it feels great in the hand. It feels a lot better than your Band-Aid competitors. So Correct. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's not comment any further on that one. But yeah, yeah thank you very much. <laughs> it does. Okay, so this phone features a quad HD display, 2K display and you need quite a lot of horsepower to power this display. So how many horses does this carriage pack? Um, four horses to be exact. Um, um, each packing 2.5 gig quad core um, crap 400 processor, which is obviously the Snapdragon 8 so. um, On the 32 gig version, it's 3 gigabytes of RAM. On the 16 gig version, it's a 2 gig RAM, uh, which is the one that's actually coming to the UK at the moment. There's maybe an opportunity at a later date to introduce the 32 gig RAM version, um, subject to um, obviously any refreshes that might go on. And what about a customization on this phone? So customization, um, one of the things that we learned from the G2 is that um, we've learned, we've taken obviously a lot of the feedback, um, and there are there were uh, there was a lot of superfluous actually kind of like uh, uh, applications, programs. We've taken and reduced a lot of that down. We've actually kind of like uh, reduced obviously kind of like some of the main core apps. We've also simplified actually kind of like the actual uh, uh, iconography. So it's very clear, very flat, very clean. Um, it's a lot, a lot more uncluttered than what you would actually get on the G2. Not to dismiss the G2 because the G2 is a fantastic handset, but we have a really, really nice, very clean experience on the G3. It does look quite great and the color scheme is quite interesting because you don't use those vibrant colors instead you use a more well, we're using more mature colors actually. So more primary, more mature primary colors actually on the handset. We feel we needed to grow up, of course, and that's yeah. it's exactly what we've done. We've grown up from the G2 um, using, as I said, the mature primary colors, and even obviously down to specific sections such as the calendar, the contacts, and everything. they're all color coded areas. So, so you, you always know the difference, yeah. exactly. You always know what area you're in every single time. So other UI features that we actually feature. Um, is Smart Notice. Um, Smart Notice is a predictive widget which we actually have on the handset. Think of Google now, but local to the handset. Um, so whenever you actually have incoming calls, you've dismissed a call, um, it will actually prompt you to actually call that person back. Or if there's an adverse weather conditions, it will actually predict, obviously, that you actually need to take an umbrella with you either today or later on today or tomorrow. Um, as well as that, it will help you to clean up your handset. A lot of people don't actually remember to catch and clean up the cache or you know, get rid of uh, uh, redundant applications. The handset or smart So there's an advantage over Google now. Which pretty much, yeah. So, feature, yeah. so the handset will pretty much 
actually tell you that these selected number of apps are not being used do you want to remove them and it's obviously at your choice um, beyond that as well we've actually improved the input method on the on the, on the handset um, we know that most people actually text either through messaging or through text messages or I am whatever um, so taking that into into consideration one of the key things that we've actually been able to do is that you can actually increase or decrease the actual keyboard size so I have quite fat fingers, so clearly I'm going to need obviously a larger uh, keyboard surface. So I can increase that obviously to the best limit. Um, beyond that as well, um, rather than kind of like having to actually kind of like look up and down to see actually where I've made mistakes, I can actually just look at the keyboard because um, and then whenever I get suggested words, rather than kind of like typing and then actually selecting that, that, that keyword, I can just swipe up actually from the keyboard and that will actually give me my, my correct word that I want. As well as that, if I need to actually make corrections, again, I don't have to go to the actual, use the cursor and, and, and get to that particular character. I can actually touch and hold on the actual keyboard, on the space bar, and then swipe left or right to actually get me to the right point. Interesting. Beyond that, we also have a, a really nice corrective predictive um, uh, input method which actually helps you to correct um, your, your input by up to or over 74% um, and it actually learns your, your, how you actually type. So if you actually tend to lean on specific characters as you're typing in a word, over a period of time it will actually always get the, or it will potentially kind of like always get you the, 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 the correct character when you're actually typing in your words. I think the feature which impresses me the most regarding the keyboard is the fact that it's resizable. Yes. Because normally you would have to get a third party keyboard for that. Correct. And now you don't have to spend money on the third party keyboard yeah. because you can do this out of the box. Pretty much. And, 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 and even additional features from that, you can actually have um, what we call a path method, which is just a kind of like a swipe gesture, um, similar to obviously what's introduced on the, on the keyboard for uh, the, the Nexus handsets. Um, and you know, you can uh, edit or correct or have auto correction, capitalizations, that are full stops, you name it, that's all, it's all available. So um, unfortunately I don't have a circle case with me, but uh, one of the great features actually about having a circle case, so the quick circle case is um, an improvement on what we had with the quick window case of last year with the G2. And we've actually got a circular, hence the reason quick circle case, um, circular window actually on this version. There's also micro apps as well, which you can actually see and manage even just through the window. It also has a really nice notification LED light which circles the handset if you have incoming calls, text messages, or actually when you close the, the, the actual case on the handset. Um, bear this in mind, the actual quick window at micro apps is also um, has an SDK which is available to developers as well. So they can actually introduce develop, my yeah, free third party apps. Correct, yeah. So they can actually develop micro apps which actually can be seen through the quick window case. That's great. Quick circle case. Yeah. Quick circle case. <laughs> so yeah, this this was basically it. I don't actually have any more questions. No, uh, thank so, you very much. Yeah, thank you, Sean, for joining us. Much appreciated, Tony. So yeah, this was basically it. This was the first look, my first look at the new LG G3. So thank you all for watching this video. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Zeno Effect, if you want to see the full review, which should be up on my channel in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, thank you for watching this video. I'm Daniel, this is Sean, and this was the first look at the new LG G3. Thanks.